ओम शांति So now you know yourself, huh? All of you know yourself. And what about God? Do you know God? Did you get introduction? Today you got it or not? Huh? You were given. Okay. <clears throat> So meditation is nothing but remembrance of God. And we have been doing it sometimes as a routine, sometimes as a ritual, and sometimes out of need. But when it is done with love, it is uh, easy, because if you love somebody, it's easy to love that person, remember that person, then your mind doesn't wander here and there. And if you have appointment with your lover or friend, you don't miss it. You're looking forward to have that meeting and you are planning into mind what conversations we will have with that friend. The same way, though we sing, Tumat pita ham balak tere, tumhari kripate sukh ganere, or tumeva mata chapita tumeva Tvameva bandhu cha sakha tvameva, tvameva sarvam mama deva deva, vidyadravinam mama deva deva. So we sing those relationships, but when we really establish those relationships, naturally it becomes easy to remember God. And that's why we call God Shiv Baba. Shiva is a benefactor, Baba is father. So there is that feeling of closeness, otherwise we think God is very far, far away somewhere and sometimes He listens to us, sometimes He doesn't listen to us. Sometimes our prayers are fruitful, sometimes not. But when that love is there, and when through love we receive the benefit, it becomes easy to the mind to be drawn to where we are receiving benefit. And what I have observed in my personal life, because I was brought up in 19, late 30s, 40s in Mumbai, and naturally in those days we girls were very protected, I would never go alone anywhere, new place especially. Remember even for my medical interview, my cousin was with me, so wherever I used to go, either my cousin or father or brother or uncle or somebody will accompany me. But after studying meditation, I toured many countries by myself without any friend, relative or any Brahma Kumar Kumaris. So the first thing I received in this knowledge was courage. Courage to be by myself, courage to face obstacles, courage to remain stable in obstacles and situation, courage to sides 
start anything new. I never used to say no. When I had to give first lecture when I was only couple of months meditating, I was requested Sunday morning, okay, you give lecture this evening and I said, okay, I'll give. Though it was very short lecture, but I didn't say, no, I won't give. So we receive not only peace and happiness and relaxation through meditation, but with meditation the concentration power increases and naturally once our concentration power is increased, our connection with God is easy and in Australia, in 80s, early 80s, we had three students, Kumaris, who used to come to meditation every day before going to their school. And even on the day of examination, they used to come for meditation or our regular class and they used to get good marks. So if concentration increases, our decision power also increases, judgment, decision power, and we can catch the feelings of others, the vibrations, no? they reach long distance and you must have heard the story of hundred monkeys in one of the islands in Japan. One monkey started washing potato in the ocean and gradually number of monkeys in that island started increasing in doing the same task. Three hundred miles away, another set of monkeys also started washing potatoes. And then the whole world, the monkeys started washing potatoes before eating. So as you know, all these vibrations go from one part of the world to another. And many times we hear some scientists, you know, doing the same research in one part of the world and in another part of the world also doing the same research, coming to conclusion. So we find that students, their performance in study is better and also we find that meditation helps in relaxation. So it's not just relaxation, but with relaxation all different powers like uh, power to focus, peace, happiness, cooperation, decision-making, discri discrimination power, power to face situation, power to accommodate somebody's weaknesses, etc. So naturally when there is l no stress in our life, the health improves. Not only health improves, but what I have seen is healing also becomes fast. Because once in Canberra, one young man, he was on push bike going from center to his home. It was dark night and a black car was parked in his way which he didn't notice 
So his push bike went on the car, on the top of the car, and he fell by the side. And unfortunately, one car passed over him. He had multiple fracture of the pelvis. And uh, he was hospitalized, and naturally, we recommend regular medical treatment. So he had uh, all sorts of pulley, pulling his legs in, keeping in one position and uh, drip going on and uh, the blood was taken out from his internal organs and catheter to pass urine and all sorts of things were there, so many tubes in his body. And his mother, when he came, she came to see him, she was crying. So I asked this young man, how, how was your stage? How much pain you had to suffer? And he said, I hardly suffered any pain. Only when I was transferred to, from table to x-ray table, trolley to x-ray table, that time I had some pain. So he was free from hospital in four weeks. Fifth week, he was driving from Canberra to Sydney, which was in those days four hours' drive, came and went back. And six week he was working. And naturally the doctors were surprised because healing of the bones usually takes eight to ten weeks, and he was all right walking, though naturally in the beginning the, the gait walking was not so balanced, but gradually he became normal. Also, I remember a case of a lady in Canberra she was in her seventies and she had cancer in the breast. So first she asked me, should I undergo operation or should I help myself with just meditation? And I said, no, you should do both, meditation as well as surgery or whatever doctors recommend. So she was operated. But when she was taken to the operation theatre, she was very calm and quiet. So the ward boy who was pulling her to the operation table says, Oh, you look jolly good. You seem quite happy. And she was quite peaceful and relaxed. Second day, when doctors came to visit her, the doctor asked, How are you? She says, I'm okay. Do you need any painkiller? No. The doctor said, Don't be courageous. If you want to have painkiller, I can prescribe. She said, No, I don't need. And whoever relatives were visiting, she would be smiling and talking and consoling them rather than her relatives consoling her. Same way, one of our senior sisters in India, she was operated for the same breast cancer. And second day when doctor comes to visit her, she's asking, Doctor, kaise ho aap aaj? And the doctor said, this is a question I should have asked this patient. And she is asking me this question. And she was so calm and peaceful that that doctor started doing meditation and he is now a KPK student. So medically I have seen many, many benefits to patients uh, also, I remember that uh, 
I was in Lusaka, Zambia in 1974 and uh, we were planning as an all PK group to visit Livingston Fall which is about eight hours drive from Lusaka. So everybody giving, started giving their name and one of this lady had asthma problem. So everybody said, oh, if we take this lady with us and if she gets asthmatic attack, then it may be problem for us. But I said, no, no, she has got courage, let us take her with us. And we took her with us and she came back without any problem. But the same lady, she was sharing her experience that uh, when she started coming to center, she used to come only in the evening because she said, oh, in the morning the asthma is a bit more and in the cold morning and all I can't come. So after she has finished the course, our regular morning class is usually in the morning, 6.37. So once she finished course, she started coming in the morning and she had no problem. So I've seen many patients having meditation improve their health, not only that they avoid psychosomatic diseases because as we know, most of the patients have 90, 95% patients who come to regular doctor, they have some psychosomatic problems, means either they have got too much fear, stress, uh, or nervousness or uh, some or lots of anger, then the effect is those who are angry people, naturally they will have high blood pressure or acidity or something. So they come with those problems, but the real problem is their negative nature. So this diseases can be naturally avoided because we receive the opposite strength. So they ca we can avoid psychosomatic diseases, we can... Healing can be fast, the lifespan increases because our Founder Father, she started meditating at the age of 60, Brahma Baba, and at the age of 93 also, he was sitting straight on Gaddi, you know, because usually yogis sit with a cross leg on the Gaddi. He would sit straight on Gaddi, walk faster than us, and never had to wear glasses. And many of his friends who were seeing him after twenty years, twenty-five years, they used to say, Dada, you look the same, you don't look older. Similarly, Dadi Janki, I was talking about her, that she is now in her hundred years. She was also, she has started traveling in overseas in seventy-four and many countries she used to travel until regularly until I would say 2000. So people who used to see her after 20, 25 years, they said, Daddy, you don't, don't look older, you look the same. The same thing happens with most of these yogis, not only that lifespan is more, but at the same time they look younger than their age because in Australia many of the BKs 
who are yogis, hmm? and we see their friends of the same age, they look much older hmm? and much unhealthier. I remember once I was in Malaysia and one of the lady was asking, oh, meditation, what disciplines you follow? So naturally I said, yes, we are vegetarian. And she said, oh, but if you are vegetarian, you will become weak, anemic. I said, that's fine. Huh? Your country, 90% people are non-veg. Are the hospitals not full of patients? And I said, okay, now we are of the same age because we were around the same age. So I said, I have been vegetarian all my life and you are non-vegetarian. Now who looks young, uh, uh, healthier? She says, you look younger and healthier because you are single, you don't have worry, you don't have family, etc. So I said, but I'm vegetarian and still I'm healthier than you, isn't it? Because people have such concept, no? Mauritius, Malaysia, they used to argue a lot that, oh, if you are vegetarian, you will be sick and you will be weak and anemic. And I said, on the contrary, uh, all the researches, especially in London, they say, that those who are vegetarian become less sick. Those who are not vegetarians are more sick because nowadays they get sickness because if the animal has got any problem, naturally the people who are eating that meat will also get that problem and nowadays, because many people, you know, by eating fish, etc., they may get diarrhea, vomiting, etc., because fishes are in such a polluted water, sea water or whatever water, that the patients are becoming sicker because of eating those you know, seafood, etc. And uh, uh, because those who are meat eaters, they have got more chances to become sick because high fat. And some of those meat eaters in Australia, in Germany and America, they eat meat in breakfast, lunch, dinner, and naturally they are overweight, heart problem, and meat eaters can have cancer of large intestine also. So nowadays in Europe, every year 500,000 people are becoming vegetarian. So the thing is, vegetarian food, if it is balanced diet, we can be healthy. Also what I have seen is those who are meditating, they are internally happy. And because they are internally happy, they have no need to drink or smoke or have addictive drugs. And not only that, they get such a willpower with meditation that I have seen hundreds of people giving up smoking, drinking, hard drugs like heroin, cocaine, etc., without undergoing intermediate treatment, because otherwise heroin addict, they give methadone, and then they start completely take off that patient from heroin, and I have seen so many BKs studying meditation have given up those addictions without undergoing intermediate treatment. So 
addiction also easy because in Australia we had one mother, she was smoking 40 cigarettes per day and for 40 years. After meditating, she gave it up, she took it time, eight or ten months, but then she said, I can't tolerate anybody smoking around me, I t walk away from them. And most of the patients I've seen, those who are smokers, they don't have, because sometimes if you give up even tobacco smoking, cigarette smoking, you may get uh, stomach upset and this and that, but I've seen them not getting any such problems. So that way we have seen meditation helps a lot. And also what is happening is with meditation we are able to transmit our thought or pick up other people's thoughts. To give one example, I was in Australia Dadi Janki was in London, Prakashmani Dadi was in America, and uh, Didi Manmohini was in India. So Dadi Janki was supposed to come to Australia, so she wrote to Manmohini Didi in India that I think before I go to Australia, I should come to Madhuban, India. And in those days, in 78, no, we didn't have so much phone connection as we have today or email or telegram also, just telegram or post. So on one from one hand, Dadi Janki writes to Didi, I will go via India from America. Dadi Prakashmani is writing to Dadi Janki in London that, oh, you should go via Madhuban to Australia. And from India, Didi Manmohini writes the same thing to Dadi Janki, oh, because you go to Australia, come via India. So the thing is, you know, how people can catch each other's thoughts and and many times you also might have experience, you are thinking of somebody and somebody rings you. So this is all, you know, catching the thoughts of others or transmitting your thoughts to a distance. You know? And also it is seen, observed scientifically, when one baby rabbit is, is no, mother and baby rabbit are far away, about five, seven hundred miles far away from each other. And the baby is given the shock, electrical shock, and mother jumps seven hundred miles away, same time. And that's what even we find, you know, many times mothers will say, I feel there is something wrong with my child son or daughter or somebody who is far away. So they catch each other's feeling from distance and it is this power of mind. As you might have heard of Yuri Geller also, no, he had such a m powerful mind. He will think of bending spoon and it spoon may be in your hand and it will be bent. He will say, clock, stop and the hands of clock will stop. And he could stop even steamers moving or trucks moving, etc. So the power of mind is such, such powerful that we can have to just develop it. And with meditation we are able to develop that power of mind which can be used in a positive way. Because in black magic they use it for negative way. Whereas through meditation we can use it in a positive way and that's why when our friends or relatives are sick far away, we just pray for them 
or we do some puja for them. Hmm? So that's how we are able to help other people as well as ourselves, because first is charity begins at home. So first is we help ourselves and then it can help other people also. Om Shanti